Welcome back to my home auto repair channel here. Uh, this time, out of my fleet of cars, I'm going to be repairing my son's 2008 Honda Accord LX model four-cylinder automatic transmission. Uh, but a pretty decent little car. Bought it at the local Honda dealership about a year and a half ago. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, it uh, has, like I say, it's been a, a pretty decent little car, but my son called me one day last week and said, Dad, I, I think I have a problem with the brakes. And I said, well, what's going on? Well, it seems that on the left side, driver front, the brake would squeal. And he described it as a pulsation when he pressed the brake pedal down. Now I got to thinking, I said, okay, so this is a this was a used car. It's not a certified pre-owned, but it was a used car. They changed the fluids, they changed the brake pads, and, you know, put it out on the lot, do some basic checks. And I thought, well, you know, usually they put the most uh, inexpensive pads that they can on these things. And this is a disc all the way around. It is not drum in the rear. It is, is disc. So uh, I said, well, you know, bring it to me, and, you know, I'll take a look and see what it is. But if that squealing could be the wear indicator uh, that's on the inboard side of these pads up front could be touching the actual rotor. So uh, brought it in and uh, it's really hard to kind of see these particular pads and this car is difficult to jack up. It's really low to the ground but uh, of course I have jacked it up. You can see my uh, jack stand underneath and I keep the jack under there just you know secondary safety. Um, you know, never rely on just a jack alone. But uh, I jacked this car up and I took the wheel off and started looking around and uh, once I got that caliper off I looked and that inner pad had worn much more so than the outer pad. I mean like a third more. The outer pad looked almost brand new and again this car year and a half old and 70% of your braking's up front. I thought well that's kinda odd uh, there was still some, some pad life on these pads, but that wear pattern kind of disturbed me. So, uh, you know, I, I took things apart. I went ahead and took the rotor off. I've decided just to go ahead and do everything from scratch. And uh, new rotors and new pads. I used the Wagner Thermoquiets. This thing apparently had some semi-metallic on there because I could see the brake dust. Well, again, I got the pads off, put them side by side, and... Uh, what I will do is, I've already done that driver's side on, and what I'll be filming is the passenger side. I'll take all four pads and put them down on the ground, and we'll make a comparison. Um, but that really wasn't the issue. When I started looking around, you know, of course, you, you pull everything apart, and you look around and see what other issues might be there. Well, I noticed that when I turned the caliper around, there was a tear in the boot for the piston. And I said, well, I could do a couple of things. I could go to Honda and I could uh, get the OEM uh, kit for the, you know, the piston, the seal, the dust boot, et cetera, et cetera. Well, it's about, um, online I've seen it for 20 so at the local Honda dealership, it'd probably be $30 per kit. And I said, well, that would be less expensive. And so uh, I figured I'd, I'd try that. So I went ahead and took the caliper off, and I was trying to get the piston out. I couldn't get the piston out. The first indicator was when I put the C-clamp on and tried to move that piston back in, it wouldn't budge. So again, I took it off and, you know, of course on the back side there's a banjo bolt and that's where the brake fluid goes into that chamber and creates the pressure to push the piston out so you'll stop. I went in there and, and they tell you, well, you know, keep the bracket on, put a 2 by 4 there are all kinds of videos on YouTube about this, put a 2 by 4 down there, cover things up with the rags, and take your compressed air and blow it from the back, and it'll pop out. Well, I tried and tried and tried. It didn't pop. So, first indicator was it wouldn't move in with the C-clamp, because, you know, when you, when you uh, move the piston back, when you have the new pads, you do it very slowly, you don't do it quickly. And you've got to watch the fluid in your brake fluid reservoir. Well, they didn't move. Took it on the bench. I even turned it over. I took a punch with a flat end to it and tapped on it lightly. It would not budge. 
So what happened was that tear in that boot created corrosion, and that corrosion made that piston freeze. And I also noticed, too, that the boot was old. You can tell when there's a lot of dry rot. The boot was old, so it's probably original. So if it's a 2008, uh, this car was built in 2007, so this, yeah, that's 10 years. Um, I could also feel grit, and I swear it may have been, you know, small metal shavings. So I knew that one was trash, and I decided, like I say, to go ahead and go to uh, AutoZone. I got Duralast, Caliper, and Bracket. And the reason I got both, all I needed was the caliper, but if I wanted just the caliper, it was mailed to your house, shipped to your house. So for an extra 10 bucks or so, you get a new bracket and a caliper. So I've already done the uh, driver's side, and I went ahead and I said, well, you know, do I do a kit on that right side? Might save me a little money, but by the time... Uh, I drive my Honda dealership, that's 25 miles one way, 25 miles back, the amount of time. Oh, to heck with it. Just go ahead and get the new bracket caliper again. So that's what I'm going to be putting on on the uh, passenger side. I will eventually be doing the rear brakes. I may not get to it this weekend, but that'll probably be another video. So what I'll do is uh, move this camera over and we'll get started on that passenger side. Okay, let's get up close and personal here. So, you know, here's your uh, rotor, here's your bracket, and here is your caliper. So, let's get up close and underneath. I'll show you where the bolts are. There are four bolts that hold all of this on so let's see you see my finger so there is I did this bolt first that's a geez what was that 12 millimeter and the second bolt okay I hope I'm not making you dizzy here's the second bolt that is the caliper that's 12 millimeter and uh, you know here's your boot oh I forgot to mention when I on that other side there I also found a small hole in the, the boot here for the uh, actual um, pins that was that was the, a bit of a surprise now down here let me get down here with the light a little bit better there we go down here you see my finger there there we go there's the uh, bolt that holds the bracket on and there's another one up top those are like 17 millimeter and up here there's a bolt this brake line there's a bolt up here it's a 12 millimeter also because when you start removing all this you're going to have to suspend it up here using some kind of a you know a wire or maybe a bungee cord so that you don't put a lot of tension on this but I am going to remove this since I'm replacing this whole caliper I'm going to go ahead and remove this and be careful you'll get some uh, obviously so you get some brake fluid out of this but I'm going to take this off while it's still on and you'll have to replace these washers it's called the banjo bolt you'll have to replace those washers which comes with that uh, new remanufactured or rebuilt um, <clears throat> excuse me caliper and it fits in a groove back here so you can't really mess that up now what I liked about the design here too on this Honda right here there is a flat so here's your caliper here's your boot here's your pin there's a flat right here and it fits into this groove right here usually there's like another bolt so you have to have if you have a 12 millimeter here you gotta have a 12 millimeter there to keep it from spinning but in this case this flat fits into a groove there and keeps that from happening Oh. I also, I have a set of clamps. I've got to clamp this line so that the brake fluid doesn't drain out of here when I start removing it. And that looks about like, uh, geez, I don't know. I'll see what, uh, what size socket it takes and I'll let you know in a second. But I'm going to clamp that, remove that, and then start taking things apart. Okay, I'm going to try and give you the clearest view of all this removal. And that banjo bolt, 
that goes to the back of the caliper is a 14 millimeter. Oh, uh, I do suggest, I mean, it really helps if you've got an impact wrench of some kind to get some of these bolts off, especially the caliper bracket bolt or um, a cheater bar and a good sized socket. And uh, it, it's, it, it takes a bit of effort. And it's, you know, again, these cars were designed to be worked on on lifts. When you're doing it on the ground like this, you don't have much leverage. So you might have to use a cheater bar. And uh, let me go ahead and take this banjo bolt off in the back. I got it clamped, maybe hard to see. Got a clamp here and a rag so I don't damage the brake line. And there'll be a washer, two washers. Um, let me also get a rag here so I don't get all over my box. It's going to drip a little bit. <clears throat> Just unscrew it. banjo bolt you'll know is a little bit different than the rest of the bolts because it has a, an actual hole in it so there's a washer on each side and uh, let's see if I can get a close-up of that let's see there's a hole right up in here and that permits the fluid to travel through take my brake line and I don't really need the bungee in this case I'm just going to cover it up so I don't get any contamination in there I'm just kind of wedge it up here in the spring and here's my old bolt it does come with uh, like I say new bolts new washers so uh, you can't really reuse these now I will go ahead and remove the caliper and what you can do is like take the upper bolt out. I've already loosened these up too, but evidently I didn't loosen enough. So let me uh, grab my 12 millimeter. Where do I have it here? No, I've got the 14 there, sorry. That's when you need an assistant. All right. Let's see. There we go. A little better. Now, what I'm going to do. Here's your caliper bolt. I'm going to slide this off. I'm going to go ahead and take both of them out. Normally what you can do is just use this one bolt on the bottom as a hinge, but I'm taking everything off. Man, it's tough on the fingers. There we go. I also, with all my bolts, because there's so much galling, over time, I just go ahead and take a Dremel tool, a little wire brush on it, and clean them up. I'm going to go ahead. Now I've already, under the hood here, I have loosened the cap on the brake fluid reservoir. And uh, so I don't forget when I start pushing the piston back in, if I have to push the piston back in, so it won't overflow on me. And I just gently remove the actual caliper. There we go. Whoop. <clears throat> that. Not heeding my own advice. All right, so here's where the banjo bolt goes. Let me see if I'm in the lot right there. That's where the banjo bolt goes. The piston's in here. And when you put the brake line back on, you'll see that groove right there. And that's where it'll fit. Now, again, when you see the photograph that I'll show you on that previous one, that boot right in there was torn very very torn and so all that corrosion got in there oops dripping again all right let me uh clean up my mess here and i'll be right back 
Okay, so we're going to remove this rotor. Now, Honda has this design in most cases. Uh, instead of a free-floating rotor, they put two Phillips head machine screws in there, which can sometimes get rusted. Uh, use a little PB blaster if you have to, but trying to manhandle it with just a Phillips screwdriver will not always work. So I have the Impact screwdriver, which is great to have. Let's see if we can get that focused. Let me back it up. And you have various tips. But we're going to knock these out. Let me show you. You can see the, the actual Phillips head there. Put the correct tip in there. And bang it. And turn it at the same time. Of course, that did it the first time. I'll take it. Ooh, this one's been, this one's been marred up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, let's see if I can get a smaller tip. Oops, I left that recording. I'll have to edit that out. All right, so, again, a smaller tip. Put it in there, get just right, turn it to the left, and hit it. And there we go. Now you can take a ball peen hammer, and it's going to have to be a hefty one, not the real small one, and take the round head and pop it a couple times. You may even have to use heat, but I love this impact. I've used this multiple times, well worth the money. I think I got this at Advance Auto. Can't remember how much I paid for it, but um, boy, I tell you, it cuts out a lot of aggravation. And it's just, uh, just that easy. A lot of bit of, a lot of corrosion on this. Hmm. Can't tell if I'm focusing or not. Let's. Uh, Back it up a little, a little intense. Use my hand. Okay, see that white discoloration, bit of corrosion. All right, let's uh, take the rotor off. And there we go. Now, this one, just by feeling. Doesn't feel it's not bad, but I'm gonna take my micrometer and go ahead and measure uh, and see what the thickness is. Now I was reading in the uh, the manual the information I have. Um, depending on whether or not it's Akibono or Nissin, the rotors for each company are totally different. Uh, one of the two is thinner than the other. So um, you know that's the way they're making them nowadays. It's it's really. Uh, some are non-serviceable. I found that out with my wife's Kia. If you look at the when I did the brake pads on my wife's Kia video, those were non-serviceable. So now they're just they're making so that you don't really resurface them. You just buy new ones. Um, I don't see anything obvious on here that you know grooves, scoring. But again, rougher on the outside than it is the inside. All right, so let me take this and uh, let me go get my uh, micrometer. We'll measure that. Okay, so I've got my micrometer here. Let's see if everything will be in the frame there. Back her up a little. There we go. Here's my micrometer. I've got it in millimeters. Twenty-three point eight. So, by the time you resurface that, you're probably down to about twenty-one. Oh, got this micrometer on Amazon for about thirty bucks. It's great. Um, so, like I say, I'm just going to go ahead and replace it. I'm not going to take any risks. 
I'm going to go ahead and clean this up with my brake clean and check the boots and see if there's anything leaking anywhere in there. So again, I'll, I'll be back. All right, not much to this part here. Uh, I went ahead and uh, took the, uh, say the old rotor off. This is the new rotor. I got this from uh, Advanced Auto Parts. Let me give you the part number. Uh, they tell me too, if you notice it's painted here and here. Uh, they tell me that uh, they're phasing the old stuff out and starting to do that because there are so many open rims nowadays. So I you know, slid that back on. Make sure you slide it in there so that your holes are in perspective because you know there's the one of the two uh, Phillips head machine screws. I've got the two machine screws here. Uh, sprayed that down uh, with uh, brake clean because a lot of times these have cosmoline or some kind of a coating on them so they won't rust while they're sitting on the shelf and uh, I sprayed it down so they get all the, uh, any oily material off. As I understand it, they're now coming out or have these polymer ones and you don't have to do this. So I didn't get polymer, I got the, the regular style. Now I'm also going to take some fluid film. This is uh, rust and corrosion protection. You can get it at most auto parts stores, uh, Walmart even. And I'm going to spritz it with that, prevent some corrosion. up a little bit. Now I'm going to pretend I'm an impact wrench. Ugga dugga. One ugga dugga. Alright, so the next thing to do is work on getting the pads into the bracket and the caliper. So let me clean up and uh, oh, let me show you the new caliper here. It comes with all the hardware. You've got the metal guides here. Got the metal guides. Here's the new remanufactured caliper and bracket. That's where the banjo bolt goes. Two pins. So let me work on that next. So I had to take a little break and ended up for the evening and I'm back out this morning. And I just wanted to read you some of the part numbers here. I forgot to do that last night. So the two front rotors, I got... Uh, our CarQuest Platinums. Got those from Advance. Here we go. And here's the uh, their painted rotors. YH145232P. Now the rebuilt bracket and caliper or Duralast came from AutoZone. 19B2661. Again, this is the uh, front only that I'm working on. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I have taken the caliper off of the bracket on the new one and I'm going to lube that up and I use the Permatex Ceramic Extreme the purple stuff. Brake Parts Lubricant. I think it was like $18. Rather pricey, but it'll last you forever. So I'm going to go ahead and... Again, I took the bracket off. Here's the actual caliper. Oops, and there goes the nut, or the bolt. And uh, these were 14 millimeter bolts here. Here's your hardware. So I'm going to put just a little bit where the hardware is going to attach.
Alright, let's just put some uh, pads in. Now, uh, oh, part number. These again are the front pads, which are different than the rear pads. I like to use the Thermo Quiets by Wagner because they're ceramic. QC914. Thermo Quiets. Wagner. Got them auto, uh, excuse me, Advance Auto. I like Advance Auto because I can throw in those uh, coupon codes. Coupon or coupon, depending on where you come from. Coupon. Coupon codes, and you can get a discount. Um, I have lucked out. I have a friend who works at one of the stores and I can actually get the commercial price which saves me even more. Now um, I'm going to apply a little more of the uh, ceramic grease to it and remember that the wear indicator will go inboard. That's the wear indicator. That's what I thought was the major problem to begin with that the pads had worn out so much that the wear indicator was striking the rotor. I was wrong. Okie dokie. So, um, like I say, for demonstration purposes, I showed you how to slip those pads in, but it's a lot easier to put the bracket on and then slip the pads in. But again, I want you to be able to see that without having to crawl up in the car too much. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, um, I also tightened these down to 79.6 or 80 foot-pounds. Here's your outer pad. One of the last things that I will do is when I'm done before I put the tire and everything back together, I'll wash the actual rotor down, backside and front side, spin it a couple times, wash it down with brake clean. Make sure I don't have any of the grease or grime or oil on any of the surfaces. But you can see the outside pad. Now let me crawl underneath. Hope I don't make anyone dizzy again. <laughs> okay, so I've tightened everything down. Uh, you know, don't forget I use that fluid film on all the bolts to prevent corrosion. Now, if you look very closely, again, here's the... Make sure that this is in its proper perspective here. See how it fits against the boss here? Nice and flat. Make sure it's the same underneath. So again, 80 foot-pounds on the bracket, 37 on the actual bolts to the pins. Now I'm going to work on reattaching the um, banjo bolt on the rear. So it'll be washer, then the brake hose, washer, and then the head of the bolt. Okay, so here's the banjo bolt. And you'll see I have a copper washer on this side, which will be inserted into the caliper, and a copper washer on this side. Um, I did not use fluid film on this because there's a hole... Let's see if I can find the old. To permit fluid transfer. So I did not use fluid film on those threads. And uh, got to be a little careful too because, oops, got my finger in the way there. One of the washers was still stuck on there, so I popped that off. So now I'm going to, Donna, boy, bad English today. I'm going to go ahead and insert this and tighten it up. It'll be 26 foot-pounds and show you how it fits in the groove. Okie dokie. I have things tightened up. Now that was an 11 millimeter bolt. See how it's in that groove? My finger there. See it's in the groove? That's what holds it in place. Make sure that things aren't twisted. So let's back it off a little bit, follow the line up, and try and get the bright light out of it. Now we'll come around like so. You see I've got it clamped off. Don't forget to put your attachment here. That was a 12 millimeter bolt there. That's your bracket to hold things in place. 
Don't forget, that was only like 16 foot-pounds. Again, a 12 millimeter bolt. Not much more than a spark plug. You don't want to strip it out. And you can see I have it clamped. Now, I'm going to do one other thing. I, I really don't have to bleed this per se, because the only thing that is void of any fluid was the chamber here. So, a um, couple of ways you can do this. Let's back up a little bit. But I saw a tip. I think this was uh, Eric O had gotten this tip. Eric O from South Main Auto had gotten this tip from somebody else. You know, when you undo your bleeder screw, which is a 10 millimeter, and you have plenty, somebody pump and push, you'll get air bubbles. Now you're trying to get the air out of the system. But what will happen is, because these threads do leak a little air when they're unscrewed, you get kind of a false reading. So the trick there is, take your bleeder out, put a little grease on the threads, then put it back in, and that seals it, and you don't get that artificial bubbling, because it'll drive you bananas. You'll go, come on now, I know I've got the air out of the system. Really? This is not working today. Must be the phase of the moon, solar flare, uh, full moon, whatever. But I'm going to put a little grease around here. So I'm going to remove it, and put a little grease, put it back in, and then I have one of those little Mighty Vacs. So what I'll do is I will undo the clamp, I'll have my Mighty Vac on, and I'll pull the air into the little uh, container. Now another trick that you can do is you take your, say your brake fluid, of course the cap is off everything, but another trick I was told is take your bottle brake fluid, put your finger of it, turn it upside down and put it into the brake reservoir this way, let your finger off, and that will automatically fill up your reservoir as you bleed the brake system. But be careful, if you spill brake fluid on your paint, make sure you clean it up quickly because it will eat through your paint. Then put your finger back on it, turn it back over. Well again, I'm not really having to bleed that much, just that area, I'm going to use my Mighty Vac. Be right back. Well, let's give this a shot. Okay, so I've got my little Mighty Vac hooked up. And notice there's a little container between the Vac and the actual suction unit. I made a mistake one time, wasn't paying attention, sucked the brake fluid up in here and, and ru ruined the Mighty Vac. So, let's see, we're going to undo the leader valve a little bit, hold that upright, and we'll just create a little bit of vacuum here. The brake fluid reservoir cap is off. I have plenty of fluid. I got about 15 millimeters of mercury right on it, pressure right on it right now. Let's see. May take a little while. Okay. Got to fill up that little chamber. All right, let's go to plan B. It worked fine on the other side, and of course, when you put it on camera, things aren't working well. So, uh, let me try this again. Maybe I have a leak in the system here. Oh, like a dummy. <laughs> Did anybody spot that? It would help if you took your clamp off. 
All right. Best laid plans of mice and men. Okay, so. Keep that there. All right, let's pull a little brake fluid through. There we go. That's closed. It's open. Get all the air out of the system. Hopefully you can see that. I get a little. I'm getting some in the reservoir. Still have a few air bubbles. Granted, there are a few leaks in this tubing. It's not perfect. But I am pulling fluid through. There you go. There you go. Pull a couple ounces through. All right, let's stop it there. Let's check the reservoir. See from here, I still have quite a bit of fluid. I'll give a little couple more pumps. That's at least, uh, I don't see much of a measurement there. That's an ounce. Maybe we'll shoot for two ounces just to make sure. Again. Rich keeps falling. Not as much air, not as many bubbles. That grease helped a little bit. I did not take the fitting all the way out. I just ran it out as far as I could without removing it and then went ahead and uh, put some grease around those threads. So it helped a bit. So I'm approaching, where's two ounces? Yeah, I'm approaching two ounces now. Okay, so I'm right to the point on the vacuum, stroke, all right, here we go. Now you just tighten it up just enough that you close it off, and I'm going to grab the old cap, there we go, grab the old cap off of the uh, old rotor and use that. And again, make sure that, you know, this doesn't go into your pump. So again, let me go get the cap and I'll be right back. Okay, a little bit of a difference here. I mean, you can even have the differences between OEM parts. Um, when I was checking, I pulled the uh, bleeder screw rubber cap off and I put it on here, it didn't fit. And that's because the bleeder screw diameter on the original that was on this car was a little over seven millimeters. This one measures out, and I use my micrometer, to about 6.1. It'll fit loosely. And if you ever price these boogers out, I've looked at them, they're like, you know, a set is like four bucks for little tiny rubber caps. So if I'm gonna pay the four bucks, I wanna make sure I got the right size. For the time being, and let me show you. Say I put it on, I could just easily pop it off. It'll, it'll work for the time being. Um, let's see if you can actually see that. From No, of course not. Let's move the camera. Alrighty. Let's get down up close and personal. Okay. Get some light on the subject. Right there. And it's uh, not as tight as the other one, but it'll do. It'll do. I like to keep the dust and dirt out. All right, so let's think about this. Everything that we've done, 
Uh, double check, triple check. So I have put in all the correct bolts. I have done the bracket bolts, which are 37 foot pound. I'm sorry, 79.6 or 80 foot pounds. The caliper bolts in this case, these were the thicker style. I found out the Akibono have like an 8 millimeter bolt back here for caliper bolts. God, it's tiny. And the Nissin happened to be like a 10. Well, I think this one was a little bit larger. Again, aftermarket and then changes on the production line as it, as it occurs. So, um, everything's torqued down. I've got my pads in, lubed. I'm going to spray this down one more time with a little bit of brake clean on both sides. Make sure I don't have any of the residual um, brake grease or anything. I use fluid film on all my bolts to prevent corrosion for everything except the banjo. The banjo was in that 26, 27 foot pound range caliper bolts uh, were 37. I went ahead and bled just that chamber and again there's not going to be a lot of air getting this way simply because I got the car tilted up and uh, duh -huh, don't forget to undo your clamp so that you can actually bleed the system. Make sure that your hose is in the proper position. So I'm double checking. I'll compare it to the other side. Everything's tightened down. I did double check all my boots and stuff. That's how I discovered that the piston boot on the other side was uh, bad. And like I said, I got the entire uh, setup, the caliper and the bracket uh, remanufactured stuff. I think it was like, if I didn't mention it, it was like $60. And then I got to take this core back because that's like $45. So it was like a little over hundred dollars. So I'll take the core back, and it'll bring it down to about sixty bucks e each. Um, I actually got the rotors again. I was able to get a commercial price of like thirty-seven. They typically run no, I'm sorry, twenty-seven, because they typically run forty to forty-five each. I think again, if uh, Advance Auto, what's nice if if you don't have that, what I did, that commercial price, you put in cu coupon codes. And they'll flash up on the screen whenever you go on the the site. There was a K something this time, that knocked 20% off. Sometimes P20 works. TRT30 sometimes works. That's 30%. Um, there's usually a minimum of at least $50 before that kicks in. And there are some items that you don't get a discount on, such as uh, oil. Uh, I'll clean this up. And like I say, the boots all look good. The steering rack, ball joints, upper and lower look good. The CV joint boots look good. Um, I may spray those with a little silicone just for the heck of it. And I'm going to get ready to put the tire back on and torque that down. I believe those are 84. I'll check the book again. But what I do is I put the tire on and then I tighten up the bolts to make them tight, drop it on the ground, then torque it. Uh, oh, I also found out too, on this particular car, you have to put the plastic uh, wheel cover on, then put your lug nuts on. I forgot to do it on the other side. It, well, I look at it this way. It may be tougher to get that thing off, but it'll never fly off, not like on other cars I've had. So uh, let me work on that, and then uh, we'll double-check and see how things go. Okay, so um, what I did is I went ahead and put the tire back on, and remember you've got to put this uh, cover on first and then put your lug nuts in. I tightened them up firmly. Now I've dropped it to the ground, and the torque spec on this is 80 foot pounds not 84 and so I'll, I'll torque it with it on the ground and then I'm going to go to the other side and do the same thing because I forgot to put the cover on uh, let's, let me do that here we go here are the pads this is drivers outer inner passenger inner outer so look at the difference in thickness pretty substantial even the inner pad of the passenger side was worn a bit thin too now part numbers again see if I can read these put my glasses down Ouch. part number looks like PBF 882-FF and then something else over here 401-3261-A1 might be Honda, might not be Honda I couldn't tell you again I looked up these numbers 
and it didn't register anywhere. Here's the old caliper, and here's the old, I'm sorry, caliper bracket. Here's the old caliper. Now, I did, I was able to push the piston back in quite easily with a C-clamp. I put an old pad here, took a C-clamp, and pushed it in. So, it did not seize like the other one. So, I'll send it back and get my $45. Uh, that'll be the core charge. But as you can see, those pads, uh, substantial wear on the inside. Again, on that driver's side was the worst with that seized piston. So to complete this job, uh, the folks at Wagner recommend that once you get the pads on, of course before we drive anywhere, we pump the brakes up, emergency brake was on, pump the brakes up, make sure everything is in good working order. Then we'll take it down the road and they recommend that you drive at about 30 miles an hour and then do a, a quick braking. Not enough if you want to squeal the tires, but a quick braking. So uh, what you get up to 30 miles an hour, do that at least 15 to 20 times. Luckily I live on a street that I can do that and then go around a loop on the other side of the road that I can continuously get up to 30 miles an hour, push the brake, stop, and do it again. So that'll be the break-in according to Wagner. Greetings and salutations, fellow YouTube auto repair enthusiasts. I'm back with a, I guess, a follow-up on my son's 2008 Honda Accord LX model four-cylinder. Uh, you know, I don't think I've gotten that first video on my site yet, but I'll make sure I'll get it up first. I had to repair the brakes on this car all the way around. And long story short, the front calipers had to be replaced because one of the pistons was actually seized. The boots in the other three were actually torn. So it was a complete brake job, pads, um, and I went ahead and did the rotors. But that was in October. This is January 2018. That was in October, two and a half months after the fact. The pistons on the front calipers that I replaced have begun to leak. Now, um, I went ahead, and, and most of them are remanufactured anyway. I went ahead and got the Duralast, reasonable price, guaranteed, you know, uh, or warranted for life, I believe. Um, my son noticed that the parking brake light had come on, and the parking brake wasn't on, which is usually an indicator in a lot of cars, especially Toyotas and Hondas, that your brake fluid is low. And I knew that I had topped everything off and triple checked. He then saw the spots. Now I climbed up under the car last weekend real quick. <clears throat> Excuse me. I know it was not where the banjo bolts were because I'd used new washers, torqued them down. Uh, I knew that it wasn't um, the hoses, so that only left the pistons. Now I've been told good things and bad things about reman when it comes to these calipers. So uh, I looked and I could see that a lot of the fluid had dripped down on the lower boot for the caliper pin. So that told me that's most likely a leaking cylinder. So I'm not real thrilled about trying those again, the Duralast again. But the problem is uh, you have to take the cores in or the old ones in to get the, the good price. Otherwise you have to pay extra. So I, I don't know what I'm going to do at this point. I'm probably going to call the store and say, hey, listen, you know, I've got the receipt. I bought these, they didn't last two and a half months, and I think you can understand my frustration, I don't want to use them again, um, what's the policy? So then the next choice is, what do I go to? So I think I'll try the Napa in this case. So let's tear this down. Oh, before I forget, um, you may notice down here, this particular pump unit, I went ahead and treated myself and bought a quick check model 7000 SLX. And if you can look very carefully, you see it's up under my car. This is a portable jack. This is the first time I've used it. Now, it will lift to two positions. I am now in position one, and you can see 
how far off the ground the tire is, and that's just position one. Now I've taken the lug nuts out of there, that's why that tire's crooked, it's not broken. We go to this other side here, and yes, I still need to clean my garage, but as you can see, that's a fair amount of distance there. Let me get down on ground level. So I can work on brakes and stuff at one level and other things at another level. So that's a good six to eight inches. Um, first time using this thing. Love this thing. Now there are different models and this particular model, 7,000 pounds, the 7,000 SLX. Good for 7,000 pounds. Well, that's in consideration if I ever bought something a little bit heavier than the fleet of cars that I have. Now, you also have to measure the span because this puts rubber blocks up under a pinch, pinch point, or the pinch wells. And it comes with eight blocks. There's tall ones and there's smaller ones. So you can actually vary the height based on what size block, or if you want to, you can combine the blocks. And that'll give you even more height. I use the smaller blocks. And you can see what kind of height I had just right. Now again, I'm a little cramped. Yes, I know. Again, once again, I will clean out this garage. Too much stuff. But once it goes up, there's a safety bar here that keeps this thing from falling back on you. Again, two positions. This is the low position. So let me start uh, taking the tires and stuff off. And we're going to climb up underneath, which now at this height, I need to go and get me a creeper. So I'll be right back. Yes, sir, Bob. I have a leak on this particular, let's see, right side. This is the passenger side. Now I'll try and shine the light and I'll point it out. See the moisture here and here and even up in here. If I put my finger on it, it would be brake fluid. So this piston, I checked the other piston. It's leaking, but not as much. On the rear, I did just the seals, but these are the calipers on the front that I replaced their Duralast. But if I can shine the light just right, it glistens. Oh, there's some right there. You'll see it glisten a little bit. And that's a substantial amount there. Well, looks like I'm gonna take it off and I'm gonna maybe head to Napa. Okay, so this is the piston that was leaking the most on the passenger side. Now, I'm going to point. I'm going to have to shine the flashlight. And I can't point and shine a flashlight at the same time. But look in this area here, and you're going to see a lot of moisture. And you'll see how dark it is where it's been leaking down in here. Which, again, very moist there. But if you look at the seal, you can see how much, how moist that is. Right at the outer ring there. This was pretty bad. Off to Napa. Oh, got a little uh, super tramp for background music. Yeah, that's, uh, I'd say that was moist. <laughs> 